Here we are looking at the spectral decomposition of matrix A. Now the spectral theorem allows us to write a real symmetric matrix A in the form of the transpose of matrix Q times matrix A times matrix Q equals matrix D, where we know that matrix Q is an orthogonal matrix and matrix D is a diagonal matrix. And we further know that the diagonal entries of matrix D are the eigenvalues of matrix A, lambda sub 1 through lambda sub n, and the columns of matrix Q are the orthonormal vectors, vector Q sub 1 through vector Q sub n. Now, using a column row representation of the matrix multiplication, we can write matrix A as being equal to matrix Q times matrix D times the transpose of matrix Q. Now, multiplying matrix Q and matrix D together, we can reduce this to the matrix whose column vectors are defined as lambda sub 1 times vector Q sub 1 through lambda sub n times vector Q sub n multiplied by the transpose of matrix Q. Now, computing this final product, we are left with the linear combination lambda sub 1 times vector Q sub 1 times the transpose of vector Q sub 1 plus all the way up to plus lambda sub n times vector Q sub n times the transpose of vector Q sub n. Now, this linear combination representation of matrix A is what we call the spectral decomposition of matrix A. Now, using our knowledge of subspaces and bases, dimension and rank, when we look at this spectral decomposition, we observe that each of the terms lambda sub i times vector q sub i times the transpose of vector q sub i is a matrix of rank 1. We also observe that each product, vector q sub i times the transpose of vector q sub i, is the matrix of the projection onto the subspace spanned by vector q sub i. And this last observation here is why the spectral decomposition of matrix A is sometimes also referred to as the projection form of the spectral theorem. So let's now continue our exploration of the spectral decomposition of a matrix A with the following examples.